uh, was brainstorming with Dr. Shiva and uh, you know I put some facts together. But feel free to interject and ask questions because uh, the topic uh, that we were brainstorming and coming up uh, was uh, the workforce optimization and the employee engagement. Right. So how does how those those trends look like? Um, you know, I don't know if you've been following. Uh, so post COVID, like Martin said, he could not travel. <coughs> there has been you know a, a different uh, workforce that is emerging. Right. So I'll just spend a minute on really the workforce that's that we are seeing now and the characteristics. Right. And largely that's true. And and since we are dealing with you know the HR professional, the workforce management youth. Some of this may resonate with you, right? So, you know, Gen X, Y, the millennials, and now the born digital or the digital natives, as we call it, right? So, what's different? Because your people, process, and technology has to enable or cater to this, right? So, the segment that we are dealing with, so this segment, born in 1965, 1980, some of us in the room, right? Um, started with some perhaps economic uncertainty depends on the region where we are coming from, right? So, the adaptability, uh, resourcefulness, those are the skill sets that we naturally have, right? Intrinsically, <coughs> right? Work-life balance, right? We've seen our parents go into that 9 to 5 culture, right? After the advent of the call center, that changed. <laughs> but yeah, in terms of what happened the next with the Gen Y, or the millennials born say from the 80s to the 90s, 96 to be precise, very tech savvy, so the dot com era, right? Again, they are tech savvy, comfortable, you know, uh, the values work with purpose, so some of our perhaps elder kids will be in that generation. They embrace diversity, inclusivity, because, you know, the, the MNC started establishing, that's how perhaps all of us from workforce management came to be in the first place, right? You know, the CCOD, as I was calling out, you know, the call center industry, how it started, you know, putting the availability of agents, etc., etc. I think the desire for continuous learning and growth started there. Here it was slightly different, the drivers were different. Now, what is happening, and if I focus on the Gen Z, that's the population that's entered the market now, and that's what we're dealing with, is digital natives, right? So, if the dot com was one, this is, you know, growing up on Xbox growing up on apps, growing up on anything that you see around the house, right? So if we were helping our parents understand, you know, the TV remotes earlier or Tata Sky earlier, it is these guys who will teach us everything that you want to know about the latest phone that you have bought, right? So that's the difference, right? Again, the digital engagement and analytics. So that's where the tool perspective comes in. The tools have to cater to that generation now. Whether you call it uh, from the workforce management perspective, the optimization, they need information ready, right? So Amit was referencing about you know the printouts coming, and that's when the planning what kick started when he started his journey. Imagine what a leap it is to this generation where they want and where it has a solution as well as a nice and everybody on employee engagement manager itself. How do I view my shifts, swap my shifts? I have an IPL match, I can't make this shift. That shift gets uh, onto a bid platform, which they facilitate. And somebody says, yes, I'm willing to take this, swap this, everything done. Pretty much like you're booking your airline tickets and choosing the seats, right? So your shift is getting bid, taken up, etc. And that platform, that ecosystem is what they are very comfortable with and the real time the essence is real time right it's not hey i'll wait till tomorrow for the manager to come back and approve my uh, you know, shift swap etc right that's what we did with right so again and again monitoring their performance you know some of us are wearing fitbits or whatever you know all these uh, jazzy uh, watches you know they are growing up with that so they need information on a real time basis and available with a transparent manner. So I don't know how many of you still continue to have your GCC setups with the screens and monitoring and driving the RTA calls with you, etc. I think that is gone. Right? And so interesting stuff and trends that are happening. 
So I wanted to first focus on the people aspect and then we'll go and look at the trends now, right? In terms of what we are entering, like I said, is a digital transformation. Everybody talks about it. So these are words that are already been embedded well. But I think the, the key point is with the automation, machine learning, AI algorithms, how does it enable both the employees as well as the managers, right? So in COVID, if, if we had people come, prior to COVID, people were coming to office. Now there are different nodes. People coming two days a week, right? And I'll, I'll cover that in the slides. How does the technology enable that, right? From a work allocation, work performance perspective, voice versus back office versus chat, whatever the only channel is, how does it get enabled from the technology perspective and gets managed, right? Without much intervention. Again, the key that everybody is looking for and the words that all of us, you know, whether it's WFO, what's the productivity and the engagement factor? Right? So WEM comes into that perspective and a committed team, right? That's the biggest question that is coming. Up. So interestingly, I'll refer to this and everybody is aware, but I just wanted to lay it out there. What's the key difference between the workforce optimization versus engagement? Right? I think WEM, with, if you keep the digital natives in perspective, is the critical aspect. And I will share some HFS report. Um, if you already read it, it may uh, again be a repetition. But I think from the great resignation that everybody saw, even in India, in the US, wherever you were, people started thinking, you know, what's really what is it that I'm doing? Can I go back to my hometown? Can I work from this place? Can I work from my, uh, you know, different place than where I was actually uh, working from the office, right? So that to a workplace freakout as uh, the HFS leader is calling. <coughs> He's saying that, you know what, there is a massive, there is a layoff that is happening. There is back to office mandates. All the companies, and, and I worked with some of them, pushed April 1st, 2022 as that and then the phase you know forward wave two happened and so people pushed it every organization right so he said you know what get people at least for two days a week because collaboration but at the back of the mind was also productivity and how do you measure it and how do you ensure that people are productive right so from that it is obviously um, i think office first first versus remote first that's the balance that we want to achieve right so that is one trend and the report covers it. If you Google it, it will come up. I didn't want too many things to put here from the, this perspective. But where I wanted to balance out the employee versus the employer perspective is that, hey, I'm looking for work-life balance, engagement, and productivity. The employees are confident in that hybrid work now. And I have spoken to, I mean, you will be speaking to your teams as well. People are by and large comfortable where they are settled now, right? Post the COVID waves, etc. Et so people are feeling that they are overworked. So you need to have tools and enable the work balance where either the alerts are coming, you know, as good as a health check saying, you know, time for a coffee break, time for a uh, water break, etc. Which your watches also do, but the workforce management platforms have also started incorporating that. Um, there has been an issue because of people working remotely on the IT security and IT downtime, right? Whether even if the applications are on cloud, we've had a lot of ransomware and whatnot. Right? So that has impacted and people have put in, at least from the survey, that 49% say that they, they've lost one to five hours of productivity per week. So you know, it's almost like 10% of the time lost. If it was latency inside the office, right? In, Back when we started, now it is IT downtime because of various issues, right? Security is IT security is one. I think from the company's perspective, everybody has optimized all the firms on the real estate. So seeing you know the balanced approach between which roles need to be in office from the operations perspective first, and then the corporate functions, and and optimize the real estate investment. But that IT security is a lingering thing, right? Some of the key processes which are high touch, which required, you know, either the payment processes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Whether we had proper tools to enable that from home, but still people would prefer uh, employees working out of uh, office on those high touch processes. Right? Again, the key is to retain the top talent. So from that great resignation perspective, 
Um, from all of this, I think the key is again, um, not that it was not there earlier, but the increased focus on efficiency. We had those waves, lot of investments happening on the tech side, and hence you see the platforms from either it's Meta or some of these firms which over invested in something. Perhaps it did not get right. So somebody made a comment that the three-year budgets were burnt in about six months, three to six months, for a tech major. Okay, I don't want to name them, but that's what the employee and employer perspective was. I covered this. Now, what's happening for us? Right again, some of this, all of us have been driving productivity. The managers, the ops, or the HR teams always come up, and and we talk. Is language, you know, both around the employee engagement. Compliance has become a big topic of discussion, both from a client timesheet management as well as the, you know, I don't know what's happening at home, right? So when it was the pre-COVID, it was like inside the ODC. I don't know what people are working, how engaged they are. Now it's at work, people working from home. So how do I ensure the compliance around the 45 hours or whatever the contracted time is, right? Whether it is productive hours or available hours. So, I think diversity and inclusion is playing a big role, right? And and maybe uh, it's a topic in itself. I will touch upon a few things uh, here and there. Um, again, the value proposition has to evolve to for a very comprehensive approach, right? Keeping that population which is now transitioning into the digital natives. How do you maximize productivity at the same time, optimal costs? And the employee engagement and satisfaction because there is a direct correlation with your retention. Right? Some of these I think you already know, but I'll touch upon a few of them. Right? Automation and AI. Again, getting the information right from the printout generation to now everything available on the portals, etc. Right? What's the availability? <coughs> how many? What's happening when you are forecasting scheduling? The actuals that are flowing in. You know the service interval ratios at the 30 minutes, etc. All that is enabled now by technology. But the key is to get those alerts either to the management or and to the employee at the same time. Right? That really will change the game. Um, employee scheduling and resource allocation, that's that's where your bulk of your direct costs are, right? So I think uh, the other trend, like I said, the employee well-being. So all the tools have started incorporating, and more and more you'll see a positive work culture. In, Coming from that, right? Even if people are working inside the office, two homes, you know, or remotely, wherever, that is creating a lot of this thing, right? So earlier the HR guys would come or the ladies would come to our ODC and have a fun Friday or whatever, right? Now all that is gone in the remote environment. So it is being set up on teams. And every organization is grappling with that, right? How do you engage? Right? And so the supervisory layer, which is there, holds the fort. The operations or the delivery, but from a workforce management, the tools can play a big role as well, right? Uh, because you have all the chatbots, you have it, uh, now the technology, and I'm sure Sneel might refer to it as uh, the same. It gets the nudge, right, from a tool perspective, right, and showing the heat map whether uh, an employee is overworked, underworked, etc., etc., right? Uh, with the benchmarks that you decide. Like I said, diversity and inclusion. You know, both from a gender as well as uh, accommodating regional and various elements, right? So all of that is coming um, to the fore, and the tools can today measure and track not just the HR tools. The workforce management tools can enable that, right? So D and I uh, or D E I, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion, is a key metric. I'm sure all the organizations are looking at it. Closely, but how do you track it, right? How do you know what's happening in your team with respect to that metric? Um, again, creating the inclusive workplace culture, right? Um, continuous learning, upskilling has been an issue, right? So there is the joke that we hear, right? Uh, somebody asking a question and the person not being able to answer, so he says, "Oh, you're COVID batch, is it?" <laughs> so you know, so a lot of our kids went through that, right? And online learning was really uh, like my son used to do alt tab and play games and on teams at the same time, right? Uh, on the laptop, right? So, and I used to question, you know, is this class 12? It's not like we used to freak out when it was the board exam, but for them it was COVID batch, right? But again, ups 
upskilling of that generation has to be you know wide sized or big sized and in capsules with gamification it is not the same that you and i learned you know the books and all of that in my right um, so the focus is still there again the tools can enable the e learning platforms uh, have to enable already in the market it's there <laughs> um pointing out the exact areas where people need learning right so it's not an umbrella everybody comes together 25 and you know take them out train every 25 but you know these are the five that are the bottom performers you know typical bottom quartile management right get them out train them equip them upskill them and bring them back uh again like i said the wem perspective is all about empowerment recognition because that's what they're craving for right they need r and r they need to feel empowered uh, so how do you balance between the office and the hybrid culture and a lot of reports have come i don't know which organization has will be able to master it google or as elon musk says you know everybody has to come otherwise it won't show up right you know everybody is passing these mandates but what's the right balance right between the client requirements uh the managers requirements or the workforce management requirements right i don't know all of you some of you may be managing your real estate as well right in office versus hybrid and when those metrics come to me i'm i'm puzzled right two days a week how do i manage this right the availability of assets because the workstations are also client specific so it's not that uh, you know people advertise right you hot testing you can go and work from anywhere i don't know askas was the advertising as well so we we'll learn from him <laughs> they have done it you know agents going to any work station and working right but um, jokes apart i think the bottom line is that our solutions can enable that you know they can create containers even in a hot testing space uh, with or without citrix the technology is there uh, you know byod thin scale if you guys are using um, you know pp was i think the pioneer and accenture is using thin scale so we are starting to use it as well to enable the byod again it's non apple devices makes your registry setting changes your registry settings and now your setup just like your proper <laughs> um i think getting the data or the visibility on the employee engagement productivity and all those metrics is key which these tools can enable right are already doing right again this is a people industry so let's not forget the bottom line is the people right all of And, and I don't have the exact statistics as to the number of people it, it changes every time. How many in Philippines? How many in India, US, Mexico, etc., etc., are actually in the BPO industry. But I think the technology that's coming has to focus on that, right? The human-centric approach, as we keep on calling. Right? So, and in that, you keep the agent as the center now, and then you focus. What are the metrics you want to track? How the technology can enable this? I just wanted to touch upon one more thing, which is chat GPT. Somebody was making a comment. I have a couple of slides that just refer how it can change. But the summary is that the right approach and our mindset has to be there. That it's not just technology, but the engaged, creative workforce that will change. Right. So the processes and, and you think in terms of how our current workforce is set up. and you know with the 20% attrition or 30% in some cases in some forms that the influx always changes the game right how do you upskill them how do you manage them from a workforce management perspective right the queues that you decide between the simple medium and complex queues how do you allocate work right you know somebody was saying about the sales queue people didn't want to leave that because of the incentives but imagine the the same client having a sales and a service queue spread between different locations between chat voice etc with a 20 30% uh attrition how do you manage that with all these perspectives in mind right hybrid and the office right um chat gpt has been a topic of interest so i will just cover one couple of slides you know uh, you would have seen this i borrowed it again uh, the source is there but This is the most interesting thing ever since it was launched. Hundred million in two months, right? That's the statistic. And everybody is, you know, thinking from a workforce management perspective, what can really change? You know, can I? Will it shave away the level one calls 
Will it take away the level one customer service calls? So it might cannibalize our business as well. But it will. It might take time. Like check, for example, the ed tech firm. So in the US, uh, you had people actually getting the homework and putting the snapshots and getting for two dollars, three dollars, getting the solution back from wherever the gig workers were. Right. So that business, you see, the stock just went down by 50, 60 percent this last week. We announced right. Uh, come down to I think like eight or nine dollars now. Um, so that business is being cannibalized or has been impacted by chat GPT because if we are posting, you know, not your differentiation, integration, but perhaps the level one science questions or English or whatever they are asking, right? That's been uh, answered in milliseconds now by chat GPT. But what is the impact on us, right? So this is one thing that I wanted to leave, and maybe uh, Dr. Shiva, you should run series around this because it is evolving right so so now um, again this is my thought after reading a lot that ultimately your technology with the AI and NLP can get you know um, more personalized responses right with the customer that you're dealing with so it can enable our agents right you have the chatbots but the the, the time in which you get access the database and Give a customized or a personalized response that can, will get impacted. I think the recommendations to the customers will be more precise, right? More accurate. Your hold times, etc., will get impacted. Right? So you, you know, ask them, okay, if my system is running slow, even then we call, right? Yeah. Can you give me a couple of minutes, etc. I think improve customer experience and loyalty. It might get us to a, a more uh, competitive advantage, right? Whoever embraces that technology first. Right? Just like it happened with conversational AI chatbots, this I think will change. For us personally, I feel workforce management leads, we will be able to do the RTA scheduling, a bit of automation around that. Right? Your RTA alerts can be automated with this. I am still looking for that solution. I have not been able to do it myself in first source, but I am assuming that this is one area definitely that will get impacted. That you are scheduling resource allocation, which whatever requires that manual intervention will get impacted. Right? So you will be able to automate that and maybe you will do it that much faster. That's my thought. I just want to leave that. Ultimately, yes, I I don't feel it's it's going to take away the jobs, etc. Just like you know, RPA was supposed to automate everything, but we know right. Either there is a platform or you have these. RPA bots assisted or non assisted, right? Uh, it did not have, I mean, the promise was huge. Perhaps all of us leveraged 10, 15, 20 percent, it's still working there. But the platforms cannot be replaced. Likewise, I feel that the people element will always be there. It might streamline, it might opti optimize the productivity, but it might, it will not take away the jobs as people are doing, right? So the ed tech firms, contact, yes. There is definitely a huge impact because the level one work that they were doing, um, getting a response, a targeted response from the database. So it's referencing that database and responding in milliseconds, right? If those of you who would have used it would know where I'm coming from. Um, that's what I wanted to leave, Dr. Shiva. I think uh, if any questions I can take, yeah. What's have you guys given on, on how can we leverage chat GPT for workforce? Right? Yes, that's what I'm saying. I'm <clears throat> not not in the sense of what how how the customer side would be impacted. How is it that we will you know probably use this whole setup as workforce as management? Workforce team. Yes, I feel your RT alerts today. So that's those screens are gone. The DCC sitting there, command centers that has already gone with COVID. Some may still have right. There is a twenty four seven process or. You know, time sensitive, right? Period time. That is the biggest area to get impacted or get automated. Because, uh, you know, so we've been deliberating this, right? So, uh, as you said, we are trying to be technology first, right? The idea is that how can we really use ChatGPT to probably do some of our RCAs by the end of the day? Yes. Right. Probably do some outlier calling, right? Read through the screen and probably identify more. Right. 
there were a bunch of other automations as well, but how can chat GPT predominantly leverage up on that, right? So those are some of the thoughts that we are kind of toying with right now. I don't know if anybody else has a anyone in the room. Uh, so somebody is kind of figuring this out. Hey, so um, one uh, case study which I can share is. Uh, from the RFP solution standpoint, there are a lot of bits which we adopt from the FW from perspective that right sizing has to be there, right? Uh, one of the solutions which we were trying to implement is right, given inputs of the sizing, right? And then ask for the right number of headcount, just as a case study on that. Uh, so number was not accurate, but it was near accurate, right? So that means uh, today. If we look into the model version 4 of the uh, chat GPT, that might not give me the accurate number, but there is a high possibility that tomorrow we have to just feed the inputs. Right? Like, uh, I was guessing this in a different way. Like, if you talk about the insurance sector sales guys, right, they will come to your house and they will do your financial planning by your uh, expenditures, like what is your requirement for next 10 to 20 years, and all those things, right. So I think this chat GPT tool can be also an enablement for our sales guy to give the real time numbers when they are into the client environment, yeah. right? Because <coughs> uh, right sizing has to be very accurate in terms of whether it is in hot automation or it is in agent automation, right? So I think that's one area which well, I have looked at. I am very focused on, let's say, a lot of other partners, right? Right. Every program needs RTAs. Everybody is asking me for a 24 by 7 coverage on the size of the program. We are always in the discussion. How can we use this technology to probably cut off some of that? So, yes. unless the case is, so what is it? Ultimately, it's a database where you are referencing. So, if your benchmarks are set, the service level Those benchmarks are set, targets can be set. Exactly. Yeah. That's where it will, it can be. With the APIs, start sending alerts, which your RTA used to do, is what I'm saying. So your database, your reference table is set. What is actually happening, rather than you going and monitoring every 30 minutes, chat GPT can enable that. It's sort of the traditional challenge has always been the ATL part, right? Yes. How do you yes. really get the data from those of the number exactly. of client platforms? Yes. Into, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you don't also <coughs> ACD, if you don't have your own, which will leverage the clients. Nobody so does. scraping that data. Exactly. So th that's why I'm saying the enhanced automation. You will need a bot to scrape that, put it in the database for it to crunch. I don't know if the APIs are, I'm not a techie, but I can visualize a scenario where a bot can scrape, put it to a common folder, and that's where. So just to add to that, uh, sort of, and uh, in Adobe, we have already done the RTL bots. So we have done away with the uh, L1 RTA support. Exactly. Right? Yeah. So RTM bot, see eventually it's all role driven. It's right. based on the thresholds, targets. Exactly. And again, uh, the, the flip side is there will be a situation where you really need to hit 90% service level at the end of the month while your bot is configured for 80%. That is still a, a distance to travel from situation handling perspective. But your L1 uh, RTA support is being done by RTM yeah. bot. The other uh, uh, the deficit on, of, of this technology is when RTM bot starts throwing alert, you're the point your operational leaders will start ignoring it. Exactly. Because there are so many of them. The human alert. Exactly. So how do you now make sure it only throws the significant one that needs to be taken cognizance of, right? So those are some flip sides. But then to your point, RTA is I think thing of past another two years. Uh, I don't think you would need RV of RTA supporting 24 by 7. And, but yes, there's a tactical side. Right. When you do the overtime management, yeah. okay, I'll think yeah. of this, right? I'll probably uh, add one perspective from purely from a technology standpoint, not from a RTA standpoint. Sure. I think uh, when we look at uh, Chat GPT as a tool, right, it will always give you a generative results, right? It will not be very, very specific to your scenario because the engine has been trained on a wide variety of data, right? It will never be specific to your scenario, and as you know, you mentioned that it is was near accurate but not very accurate, right? It will never be accurate. Because your specific scenario is not tuned into the engine. I personally believe that uh, we are still 3 4 years away from a personalized chat GPT kind of an engine where it can tune to your organization's need 
and then ultimately to to an individual's need, right? But to have that kind of a thing, it needs to be trained on your organization's data. Today, it is only trained on public data. It's not trained on your organization data. So till the time we get there, and I think it's a fantastic use case. Uh, you know, uh, as as a technologist myself, I believe that you know someday when it happens, you know we'll have personalized watch for everything, right? Today our phones have it. Tomorrow our workstations, our laptops, everything is going to have it, right? So the human element will come down, but I still believe it's a long way to go. Uh, but I'm sure we'll get there someday. Let me add. Let me add to that. So for the customer-facing side of it, the reason chatbot or the ChatGPT is not there or any AI generative piece is not there is it tries to bring in a new piece of information based on what is going on latest. Right now, which is useful in some scenarios, but imagine you are an agent answering someone, and every time you get a different answer, okay, or maybe next day you get a different answer. That's not what the target is. Or if you look at a financial transaction, you want that precise piece of information coming out all the time. If it was a bank, they want that the bank branch should say the same thing, which an agent does, or the person coming to the response does. So chat GPT in that respect is not, I would say, conclusive. But as far as for the inside one, I do have. You have been giving me assignments to cover, so I was adding slides, so I'll try to cover that. Good. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks, Arun. Thank you.